In 2019, I was doing administrative work at an insurance company. Every morning, I'd get up at 5, take a cold shower, get dressed, and head up the road to travel. Once I got in a taxi before a certain time, I'd get away from most of the traffic and be at the office around 6.30, long before the workday is supposed to begin at 8. I'd open up, warm my breakfast, and prepare myself for the day ahead. It was simple work, I'll be honest. It's not like I was lifting boxes or working at a restaurant, although I do have some stories for that experience I might share someday. I was just scanning, sorting, scanning, uploading, filing, documenting, stamping, noting, registering, scanning, sorting, uploading, filing, fixing the print in cartridge, re-upping the paper, scanning, re-scanning, sorting, uploading, filing, editing, lunchtime. I spent the latter part of my day working on my own projects. After all, I couldn't let them suck up all my time. I was organizing in the early days of what is now the movement I'm a part of. I was also, in addition to a full-time worker on a three-month contract, a full-time student to get my bachelor's. And I know I had it easier than many. I mean, I found ways to spend my time meaningfully. I was able to snack on the job and listen to music and audiobooks. On my lunch breaks, I take walks or naps, yet I was so, so depressed for that whole working period. It felt like my soul was drained. I felt grey. My ex had broken up with me. My courses were demanding so much effort, especially my group projects. I was leading the climate group. I was commuting for hours every day. And when I got home, I always had to confront a messy room thanks to my siblings and a sink full of dishes to tackle. Plus. The skies were heavy on the rain on some days and violently hot on other days, barraging me on either extreme. I was getting sick and not recovering for whole months, not to mention a few other more personal challenges I was dealing with. I was struggling. I wasn't quite at my mental limit, my stress threshold, but I was close. And thankfully, I was lucky. I was able to go back to studying full time after the contract expired. I don't have any bills for now. In my final year of college, and things aren't as bad as they were last year, my blood isn't running thin daily. But, jeez, stress. There are more stories to tell, but I think we can all remember the stressful periods in our lives. 43% of adults suffer from stress, and 75 to 90% of doctors' visits are stress related. And it's trash. It really is. You can feel it in your skin, in your muscles, in your bones. Like tree rings telling a story, you might even be able to pinpoint where stress has harmed you. Stress is the consequence of many a calamity and the catalyst of many more, mentally, emotionally, physically, and socially. Stress is a tension caused by events, thoughts, or circumstances that lead to frustration, anger, and nervousness. Our bodies react to such strenuous demands and challenges in our being with stress. And there's so many things that can trigger stress. Work stress, like the commute, workload, hours, conditions, fear of termination, termination, and of course, the submission to a nine to five dictator. School stress, like classes, grades, workload, exams, teachers, students, and the fear of what's to come. Mental stress, like depression, anxiety, anger, fear, uncertainty, change, expectations, grief, guilt, chronic illness, trauma, loneliness, and low self-esteem. Life stress like the loss of a loved one, marriage, breakups, divorce, social drift, social obligations, natural disasters, the consumerist rat race, public speaking, pandemics, policing, discrimination, harassment, assault, and other forms of violence. Stress is suffering in and of itself. As a result of it, we deal with headaches, sleep problems, muscle pain, digestive problems, sex problems, blood pressure issues, moodiness, restlessness, demotivation, irritability, substance abuse, and so much more. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but a lot of the sources of stress are just capitalism, like the result of our white supremacist, patriarchal, capitalist global society. I hope I haven't lost you. Let me explain. Capitalism and stress. Modern life is madness. Ever greater levels of sadness. People can recognize on a visceral level that things could be different. 
We're alienated and anxious. It's been estimated that no more than 23% of everyone alive today is free of psychopathological symptoms. But we keep playing normal. We're mentally, and in many cases, literally impoverished. Our society is deeply unhealthy, and we all know it. Check the countries with the highest levels of inequality. The numbers of people with stress-related diseases are through the roof. The economic cycles, the boom and bust, they trigger hypervigilance in our bodies. We have to constantly scan our urban jungle for threats of job loss, automation, financial insecurity, and the decimation of entire economies, ecosystems, and sectors. It's almost as though we're held in captivity, psychologically dominated by unpredictable, widely varying abuse, and hierarchical power structures that capitalism engenders. And a psychologist, Judith Herman, notes, the ultimate effect of psychological domination is to convince the victim that the perpetrator is omnipotent, that resistance is futile, and that her life depends upon winning his indulgence through absolute compliance. Capitalism exploits the body's natural survival response by creating the conditions of psychological domination, but it alleviates stress by producing an economy organized around the production and circulation of addictive substances and practices. Think about it. When capitalism was born, it was organized around creating and feeding addiction. Coffee, sugar, chocolate, spirits, tobacco, people use these substances to self-medicate in response to the effects of capitalist dominance. Look at today. People still love off their chocolates and their coffee. Everyone's an alcoholic. Oh yeah, and we're all addicted to social media. We're all just trying to find a way to live and it's hard to tell where recreation ends and addiction begins. Societies throughout history have had to contend with power dynamics and the stress they cause. Many of the most egalitarian indigenous societies dealt with the quest for status and power by undermining and isolating those who try to bully and dominate others. Egalitarian societies respond to power and status by trying to mitigate its effects, while capitalism propagates exploitation and traumatic stress in ways that promote the pursuit of power and status and ultimately keeps the system functioning. I mean, we don't have to work for so long. We don't even have to be at school for so long. Studies have demonstrated that we can only consistently and effectively perform tasks for about three to six hours per day, for one to two hours at a time. Researchers say we should aim for four hour work days. But guess what? We still work in eight plus hours a day. Why? Because it stresses us out. When we don't have leisure, we need convenience. Convenience is profitable. And when we're stressed, who really has the energy to fight for their rights? It wasn't always like this. As Robert Anton Wilson described in Prometheus Rising, when capitalism built itself, the social bond was broken. We're bonded to money now. Our survival doesn't depend on other people in this society. It depends on getting that cheddar. You lose the cash, you lose your mind. In tribal society, the threat of exile was the source of much anxiety. That kept the social glue intact. Now, the terror lies in not having that paper. That terror isn't going to go away until we sever that bond to the cheese. In Taoism, there's a concept called the Tao. It's the natural course of the universe and everything it encapsulates. Nature follows the Tao with ease, but we have willpower. We can choose to go against it. We don't follow our natural course now because our society of control and shame, oppressed by government and capital, keeps us swimming against the river's current. What a stressful existence. So, what can we do? I checked WebMD and it said that stress could be managed through, among other things, maintaining a positive attitude, meditation, yoga, exercise, healthy eating, time management, leisure, sleep, social support, and mental treatment. Obviously, these techniques can help to manage and in some cases relieve stress. I'm sure there are other videos that go more in depth. I mean, meditation is great. A 15 minute exercise every other day, Fantastic. Get a good night's sleep. Wonderful. Try them if you can, really. Pick one thing and start working towards it. Go to bed early tonight or do some deep breathing for five minutes. Now, seriously, leisure is vital. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Our society has created the word laziness to guilt us constantly for not working constantly. But, you see, none of those things address stress systematically. They address it personally, sure. They don't address people's lack of free time and lack of access to healthy food 
a safe home environment, or affordable mental care. Even among the fortunate, therapy is often focused on fixing the individual to adjust to a sick society, using medication if necessary. That's not enough. Distress, misery, and loneliness are woven into the very fabric of our system. Our physical environment and socioeconomic status have tremendous power over our well-being. The crisis is capitalism. And that's the hard part. How do we fight capitalism? I mean, it's exhausting. What now? I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. But I found something that might be able to help. Support groups have potential for building true solidarity. Get together with those you love and communicate. Share your feelings, work through your challenges together. We are all that we've got. We can't afford to wait until after capitalism has been abolished to be happy. While that is the long-term cure, understanding the root of our stress can make the personal political, driving us to act and connect with people who can support us. To my comrades, my friends, my homies, take care. Talk to someone. Connect with art that comforts you. Don't overextend yourself. I get it. You're hyper aware of every pain, acutely aware of the suffering that continues across the globe. But it's not all on your shoulders. Awareness of the social must not mean ignoring the personal. We need to resist the war against our minds that is waged by modern society. The robbery of our humanness. The invasion, occupation, and destruction of our very being. We need to heal ourselves. Conversely, obsessing over only the welfare of the self is an equally awful pitfall. The question is always, can I change? Can I grow? Absolutely. But healing is an act of communion. And the world must be forced to change too. Beyond recognition. We have each other. In the nightmare of today, with all our fears and limitations, liberation must remember the whole, which exists in each of us. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. It really helps as a new YouTuber. Um, you could also check out Class Struggle and Mental Health, linked down below, and check out my previous videos as well. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore St. Drew, and you could also buy me a coffee if you'd like. And I'm also posting blog posts every Tuesday at noon on medium.com slash at saint.drew, so check that out. Later!